Hello everyone, and welcome back to World of Warship Splits with Terry. About a year ago, I've made a video, uh, an FAQ video, about which uh, tech tree line to grind. And uh, this sort of thing is quite popular. I'll leave a link to the, to the video in the description, in case you're interested in the motivation or the basics. I'm not going to repeat everything, but I did want to update this for 2023 because there are a couple of new branches and I also want to take a slightly different approach because last time I've talked more about ship roles. Uh, I'm going to assume that you have an idea what I'm talking about if I mention uh, these sort of things. Otherwise, again, check the other video. Uh, this time I want to go more of a linear run through of the existing tech trees. So let's get started. American tech tree. What do we have in the American tech tree? We have a destroyer line. American destroyers are uh, pretty good all-rounders. They've been the, they've been in the game forever. It, it takes quite a bit until the higher tiers until you can actually stealth torpedo, so torpedo without being spotted. But they are decent gunboats. They've got smoke screens. They've got uh, they've got defensive AA, which is not going to make a huge difference. But they are they are re a reasonably decent all-around destroyer line. The, uh, the American heavy cruisers again one of the oldest lines in the game. Uh, they are good assault cruisers. They have good uh, armor-piercing shells and uh, they have a very, very good uh, anti-air defense in higher tiers. They have their guns forward, so you can do a lot of play bow-in. But you, you, with this line, you kind of want to... You need to have good situational awareness and you need to know uh, like map layout, island cover and similar things to be successful. The light cruisers, which is starting with the Dallas here at tier 6 after the split, uh, leading up to the Wooster, has hands down the best AA in the game. And uh, these are excellent support cruisers. They have got uh, radar, sonar, they are an absolute menace against destroyers. They tend to have lots and lots of rapid firing 150mm guns with dangerous armor piercing and, uh, at least in higher tiers, pretty decent high explosive. So the sh given the very high shell arcs, these ships are often being played behind islands where they are not actually being spotted because you do have to be careful with... Uh, these are cruisers <laughs> with large caliber battleship shells coming in. So again, they do require a certain amount of map awareness to be played. But these are also, this is probably the best support cruiser line in the game. So if you like supporting your team, that's something for you. Now, looking at the battleship, uh, at the battleship line, there is the uh, there there was the traditional line leading up to the Montana, and just like the destroyers, the, this is one of the oldest lines in the game. They have they, they tend to have uh, the mantra of throw enough shells at the wall and something's gonna stick. The ships in in higher at least after the Colorado are are pretty quick. The armor is relatively average. Uh, they've got lots of, of re for high ca for high tiers lower caliber guns, but uh, the armor piercing shells are good. The range is excellent on these ships, and with a rapid reload, you get to throw a lot of shells. So uh, these are again, this is a relatively good battleship line that you can play. Just if you are uh, if you're looking for something, you know, just pretty much average. Which brings us to the alternate battleship line, the non-historical one, leading up to Vermont with Kansas, Minnesota and Vermont at tier 10. Uh, these battleships have, have a more long range, heavy weight, very long reload ships. They're not necessarily, uh, necessarily meant for close quarters engagements, but uh, they're best played at, uh, at their ranges and uh, lots, of, lots of firepower, but very slow reload. So you do have to make it count and uh, very good at firing at enemy battleships and doing lots of damage. But again, uh, not, not more specialized, not such an all-rounder line. The American aircraft carriers leading up to the midway are probably the easiest to play in the game. I am not an expert on aircraft carriers by any means, <laughs> but um, uh, they have a relatively heavy f focus on dive bombers, which are automated because you just need to point them at the target and then they drop their dive their bombs there. They're very good at setting fires and uh, for carriers probably the one line that would be recommended for a beginner to go with just because you don't have to control too many air wings. Which brings us to the second uh, tech tree that was there from the very beginning, the Japanese tech tree. Starting from the top, we have the gunboat destroyer line that has been added uh, more recently, leading up to the Harugomo. Uh, starting with the Akizuki at tier 8, 
These destroyers are very good at uh, using their guns from long range, setting fires. Uh, they're less focused on torpedoes, although they have very, very potent torpedoes. Japanese tend to have one of the best torpedoes in the game. So uh, up to and including the Shiratsuyu, it's pretty traditional. But starting with the Akizuki, this is an excellent line for long range gunfire, setting, setting fires and uh, farming damage on larger targets. The second line leading up to the Shimakaze, which is the original torpedo boat line, is just that. It is a torpedo boat line. These are stealth torpedo boats, which means what you want to do in these ships generally is trying to not get spotted and use your torpedoes to, to for maximum effect. Uh, the guns are quite average, so you don't necessarily want to be want to be using those because it also gets you spotted. And uh, it's a very powerful line. But you do kind of need to know how to anticipate enemy movement from a range because you want to play at ranges where you're not actually getting detected most of the time. The Japanese heavy cruisers, uh, starting at tier 5, which is where the split is. So the Furutaka is, I think, one of the earliest heavy cruisers in the game at tier 5. Uh, the heavy cruisers are stealthy, fast, long-range uh, torpedo and boat, uh, torpedo and HE spammers. They carry lots of torpedoes. They carry very powerful guns, but they're not the most maneuverable ships out there. And uh, in a close range fight, they don't have an awful lot of utility. So most against things like uh, defending yourself against destroyers it can actually be uh, rather tricky. So most of the time you want to keep your distance. You want to sail away from the enemy. Uh, you want to ambush ships using your concealment and you want to uh, manage to get maximum damage out with torpedoes and fires and using your excellent high explosive shells. The armor piercing shells on these heavy cruisers are not the greatest. Which brings us to the Japanese light cruiser line, which is a very recent entry. And these ships have uh, have excellent AA, not as good as, as the Americans, but still very good AA, and uh, lots and lots of guns plus torpedoes, but are not the most maneuverable ships out there. So just like on the heavy cruisers, you generally want to keep your distance, uh, send out HE shells flying against enemy ships, set fires, and you have got a bit more utility than on the heavy cruisers. So you can do a bit in terms of air defense, but uh, other than that, it's a it's a it's a somewhat similar line to the American light cruisers with a little less of a focus on utility. Which brings us to the Japanese battleships. The Japanese battleship line is an interesting one. Um, it leads up to the Yamato, which obviously at the beginning when the game was created had the biggest guns in the game. Uh, the Japanese battleships generally can play at extreme ranges, but excel at, uh, at mid ranges. And uh, there are a couple of oddballs in there, like the, the Amagi at tier 8 and the Izumo at tier 9, which is somewhat infamous for being a really tough grind, but the Yamato at tier 10 is very much worth it. So you can play these ships from very long range, and you do so in the opening stages, especially at the beginning of the battle, but um, you generally have a very good torpedo defense, so if you're coming under attack by destroyers or aircraft, you can somewhat mitigate the impact of the torpedoes. But uh, the guns really, really hurt. They have excellent armor-piercing shells, and the guns really hurt, especially at mid-range, if you can get them reliably on target in the, in the latter half of the battle. But in the beginning, you definitely want to play these ships from long range. So if you're not too sure about, about battleships, and you're okay to play something which is having a bit less AA, and you want to have a bit more precision and play from range, these are this is a good line, alternative line to start with. The American battleships being more of an all-rounder, pretty hard to set on fire, and uh, a pretty good AA as well. Uh, Japanese carriers are a much harder line to play because their focus is mostly around torpedo bombers, which are not having automatic targeting, so you do need to manually control where you're going to drop your torpedoes, and uh, you've got to manage a lot of air wings at the same time, so uh, definitely one for the more advanced players out there. Certainly not for me. The British line is, or the British tech tree is actually starting to get relatively populous. This is a tech tree that had been introduced a bit later. Um, starting with the destroyer line going up to the Daring, uh, very maneuverable destroyers generally, 
and their specialty is that they have a single fire torpedoes. So you can, if you have a very good skills at estimating your your enemy's movements and you can manage to get interesting patterns laid with these torpedoes or you can run high risk high reward actions of getting all the torpedoes on target without using wider spreads. This is a very good destroyer line and uh, generally very fun to play. The light cruisers of the British line is one of the personal favorites of mine. So these are uh, very light cruisers. <laughs> Uh, the British light cruisers only fire, fire armor piercing, so no setting of fires with this. And uh, especially up to tier 8, you need to learn how to use these guns with armor piercing only effectively against battleships. Because if you're hitting on the belt armor, you're not going to do any damage. You do need to target weak spots. They do have torpedoes and smoke screens. And uh, ne both ne Neptune is probably one of the best tier 9 ships in the game, in my opinion. Which makes the grind up to Minotaur. Um, very much worth it. Now these are very light light cruisers. They will absolutely be destroyed by uh, large caliber shells. You can you can kind of uh, compensate for that a little bit by using your smoke screens, but other than that, uh, they are more scout cruisers often uh, in terms of playstyle often than uh, than you would you would say as support cruisers. They have pretty decent AA, but. Um, uh, absolutely devastating guns and torpedoes if you can use them properly and they also have the single fire torpedoes. The British heavy cruisers, starting with the Hawkins going all the way up to Goliath, is generally considered one of the weakest line in the game. Uh, they have large caliber guns but reasonably slow reload and uh, while they have some torpedoes and they also have the smoke screens, they are large targets and can be easily devastated by large caliber battleship shells. And the slow reload and the somewhat focus on the high explosive shells is not doing them necessarily much of a favor. There are some people who really enjoy these, but uh, this is a line that's probably not recommended for beginners who still have to learn how to, you know, how to cruiser. Uh, it's not one of the best lines out there. Following with the B British Battle Cruiser line, starting with the Indefatigable and leaning all the way up to the St. Vincent. The British Heavy Cruisers, as I said, the, the British Battle Cruisers are uh, an interesting line, and you, you wouldn't see it from the ship classification that this is actually different because they are classified as battleships in the game, but they are battle cruisers, which means they have. Uh, they have not quite the same amount of armor that normal battleships have, which means you can't really sit still at long range and use your armor to deflect damage. Uh, these are more mobile ships. Uh, they do tend to have torpedoes, although very few of them, and uh, they have a pretty decent amount of firepower, plus very powerful heals, which allows them to, if managed properly uh, and, and set up properly, use their hit point pool quite a bit in order to, uh, to in order to sustain damage throughout the battle but if they come under concentrated fire these ships will melt relatively quickly so again certainly not a beginner line but um, not a terrible one at that now the british battleship line starting with the bellerophon at tier 3 and leading up to the conqueror at tier 10 has some highlights in it but um, especially around uh, around tier uh, tier 7 the king george v is a very very good ship uh, the, the gimmick of these British battleships is that uh, they have excellent high explosive shells and the armor piercing shells are a bit mm, reduced in greatness on, in return. So against destroyers, these ships tend to be quite a bit of a menace because they do come uh, preloaded with high explosive and high explosive doesn't over penetrate. So uh, before the introduction of the Italian battleships, these ships used to be uh, quite dangerous against enemy destroyers. And they still are, but uh, at the higher tiers, they can be really, really challenging to play. And uh, Lion or Conqueror are not the greatest ship out there. Their armor is quite weak. Uh, their maneuverability often tends to be terrible. And the firepower needs really, really careful management of, of hit points to, sustain, to, to stay in the battle long enough to make good use of it. So w one for the fans, I would say. <laughs> Uh, and uh, for everybody else, if you stop at tier 7, I don't think anyone's going to blame you. Now, the uh, British carriers, again, I am not a carrier player, so I'm not going to say, I'm not going to be able to say an awful lot of it, but uh, 
I think the thing with the British carriers was that the torpedoes are relatively slow, but the planes are quite powerful at that. So probably one of the lines that are somewhat in the middle of things. But again, I'm totally not a carrier player, so don't quote me on it. <laughs> Gonna leave it at that. Which brings us to the German ships. So uh, starting out with the destroyer line on the top, a traditional destroyer line. Uh, German destroyers, uh, these, these German destroyers on the top, have uh, are excellent gunboats. They have very, very hard-hitting armor-piercing armor shells, and uh, they are very, very good at dealing with enemy destroyers. Uh, they are decent torpedo boats, although if you're not using the guns, it's kind of wasted. Uh, definitely make sure to use the armor-piercing, not the high-explosive shells, because high-explosive shells on the German tech tree are generally weak, with very, very few exceptions. So learning how to use the armor piercing properly is, is definitely going to be good. And uh, they do reload their torpedoes pretty fast. So you can, uh, you can make prolific use of your torpedoes. Very good ships, uh, very good kind of uh, blue collar working, working ships. Good at capture control and dealing with enemy destroyers. The split at tier seven leads down a different line towards the Elbing. These are scout cruisers. These are not destroyers, even though they're classified as destroyers. They have cruiser caliber guns, and these guns have so much penetration that uh, they can be absolutely vicious at extreme ranges. They also have very slow long range torpedoes. So this is a, definitely a line that is more played like a, like a very light cruiser. And uh, they can certainly hurt battleships with their 150 millimeter guns with armor piercing but do struggle somewhat uh, against enemy destroyers. Which brings us to the German cruiser line, uh, leading up to the Hindenburg at tier 10, up to and including tier 6, these are light cruisers, and starting at tier 7 with the York, uh, they are uh, switched to heavy cruisers. The York is the only oddball in the range, which has actually very good high explosive shells. Otherwise, we're talking about excellent armor-piercing shells and... Uh, and uh, torpedoes that have a very short range, it can be used, but mostly it's about uh, the, using these 203 millimeter armor piercing. Which leads us to the battle cruiser line in the German tree, starting on with the von der Tann at tier 3 and leading up to the Schlieffen at tier 10. Uh, these ships trade some survivability for firepower. They have torpedoes, they have monstrous amount of secondaries, and uh, their main guns, one cannot quite uh, keep up with the traditional main, uh, main battleship line, but are not bad also. Again, German armor piercing is very, very good. Uh, these ships are ambush ships and hunters. They are not necessarily the most powerful ships in the game, but they can uh, make an absolutely hilarious amount of damage if you're, if you're playing them right. And uh, you just have to be aware that you cannot, even though you are classified as a battleship, you cannot just uh, tank or sustain damage or at, uh, over time easily. And uh, you do need to play in secondary range, which is a little bit more difficult on the battle cruiser line because of the comparatively lower armor and survivability. Which brings us to the battleship line, leading up to the Großer Kurfürst at tier 10. These are, if you want to say, battle axes, battle axes or uh, battering rams. So these ships are very well armored. They have a great survivability. This doesn't mean that you can just blindly sail Leroy Jenkins into the enemy team, but you can, so you can survive quite a bit of fire, incoming fire for a while. And uh, these ships have, again, excellent secondaries. Uh, they can uh, they can create breaches in enemy lines by just smashing through uh, sm smashing through some other ships. They like to play up close if possible, and they've got like the battle cruisers, very good 150 millimeter secondaries, uh, which can which can fire armor piercing and are very very dangerous against destroyers. They've got good auto secondaries and the main guns are pretty good as well. And the main the main feature of these is the biggest and heaviest armor in the game and the best survivability uh, during these kind of kind of operations which allows them to deal a lot of damage the german aircraft carriers there are is is a half line which means you're you're tier skipping there are no tier sevens or tier nines and uh again i'm not going to say too much about the german aircraft carriers but uh Personally, I like them. They have, I would call, I would classify them as assault carriers. They have uh, 
they have a lot of AA. They 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 have good auto secondaries, which means they shoot by themselves. You don't have to do it. In fact, you can't even. But uh, they have pretty good auto secondaries and they have a very good AA. So you can play this quite aggressively if you know what you're doing. And uh, you can do things like even if you've lost all your planes because you're like me and don't know how to how to carry it well, you can still use them as AA platforms. So <laughs> there's that. Which brings us to the Soviet tech tree. The, well, Russian slash Soviet, later ships Soviet, but it's generally got the Soviet flag on it. The destroyer line, the original destroyer line leading up to the Delny, this used to be the Khabarovsk, which has turned into a premium, but is now replaced by the Delny. These are extreme gunboats. They have got very, very good guns, but tend to have very, very short range torpedoes. So these ships, if you don't necessarily know what you're doing, and you're trying to get into torpedo range, can be very difficult to play. Uh, they're more suited towards long-range gunnery and using the torpedoes more uh, using the torpedoes more situationally at close ranges. Whereas the split line, uh, Ognivoy, Udaloy and Grozovoy is more of a balanced ship line. They still have good guns, but uh, they can also play stealth torpedo roles quite successfully. Going through the Soviet cruisers, uh, we have li the light cruiser line all the way going up to the Nevsky. And these are very, very good light cruisers, especially in terms of uh, ranged fire. They've got precise guns and a hard, relatively hard hitting guns. Uh, also with the armor piercing, they can be a bit of a menace to destroyers, but they tend not to be particularly maneuverable and don't react too well to being shot at by things like battleships, but can on a, on a kiting role or from a long range fire support role be quite devastating and uh, set lots of fires or use the armor piercing to great effect. Uh, they do have torpedoes for close range defense, but they're not torpedo boats per se. And uh, they do have some anti-aircraft capability as well. The heavy cruisers uh, going up to the Petropavlovsk. The Petropavlovsk is uh, not my favorite. It's more of a super cruiser setup. And uh, I think she suffers from trying to having to play like a battleship without the range of a battleship or the firepower of one, uh, and especially not the armor of one. So uh, I would personally maybe not necessarily go there uh, if, you're in, if you want to play Soviet cruisers. But the, uh, the light cruisers, I think, here are a better choice, in my personal opinion. The Soviet battleships are uh, somewhat geared towards mid-range. They are quite well armored, actually, and uh, their guns hit reasonably hard. The ships like the Kremlin can be very trollish because they... Uh, they can... the dispersion has such a wide range, so it can either be all guns absolutely laser precise or the shells go everywhere. So uh, one of the biggest issues I have with these is the lack of defenses against any kind of destroyers and uh, main battleships generally don't have that but uh, this line specifically in my opinion can struggle quite hard against uh, against incoming destroyers on higher tiers. Uh, other than that it's a good it's a good line to play if you want to play ranged uh, up to mid-range so if you just prefer to kind of sit back a little bit, uh, that's not a terrible line to play. Just be aware that they can be somewhat inconsistent. Uh, Soviet carriers have a gimmick of uh, throwing a lot of planes into sort of suicidal <laughs> suicidal air, air rushes. They tend to have lots of planes and while they don't individually do an awful lot of damage and tend to get to shot, shot down relatively easily, uh, you're just sending in a lot of them. On the Pan-Asian line, we have the destroyers. The Pan-Asian destroyers are often American destroyers that have been repurposed, but uh, they, their specialty is that they fire deep water torpedoes. And you find that across the whole Pan-Asian line. They fire deep water torpedoes, which means you cannot torpedo enemy destroyers with these things. They just pass right underneath. In return, you do increased damage against anything that isn't a destroyer. And uh, they are very good multi-role ships, in my opinion. They get radars, they get smokes, they have decent American guns and uh, can really hold them themselves in, in any situation. So I'm quite fond of this destroyer line. Uh, just be aware that you can't torpedo enemy destroyers, which honestly, in my opinion, is not such a huge issue. 
because in higher tiers torpedoing destroyer players that know what they're doing is difficult anyway. The scout cruiser line, or cruiser line in generally, all the way up to the Jinan, is an excellent light cruiser line that has been recently introduced. Extremely light cruisers, so again, more scout cruisers than actual cruisers. Uh, they have good AA, they get fuel smokes, they have the same sort of devastating amount of deep, deep water torpedoes and uh, lots of small caliber rapid firing guns. They're really more like oversized destroyers that uh, if they if they they give broadside to anything, <laughs> they can be very easily deleted from the game. So you do it's a high it's a high high risk high skill high reward line uh, that for beginners is probably not the best choice, but for experienced players can be extremely fun and rewarding to play. On the French line, we have the French destroyers. Uh, French destroyers are also more like scout cruisers. Uh, they rely on extremely fast ships uh, with relatively powerful guns and uh, a decent set of torpedoes, but large ships with not the best concealment. They have some of the fast sh fastest ships in the game that uh, will struggle necessarily in a close range dogfight with enemy destroyers, but from long range, uh, but at long range fire are quite are actually quite decent so uh, it's it's not a terrible destroyer line to play with for uh, in the beginning but you do have to be careful if you want to rush enemy capture circles and be aware that you really don't don't have anything to get you out of trouble other than your speed the french the french cruiser line does the switch at tier 7 up to tier 6 the la galissonaire is one of the best light cruisers in the game in my opinion at that tier it's a very, it's a very, very good ship. Uh, the Algerie, not so much. I'm not particularly fond of the heavy cruisers. Uh, they are again very fast, and uh, they can do a decent amount of damage. They have some torpedoes and uh, pretty decent guns, but um, the armor is is quite questionable, and you won't see you won't see these around an awful lot. I think uh, a lot of people will struggle to actually get across the Algerie. So if you want to just uh, if you want to have a very very good tier six light cruiser, the La Galissonière is definitely worth it. Uh, beyond that, uh, it becomes a bit more situational, which leads us to the French super cruisers, uh, leading from Cherbourg to Marseille. Uh, these ships are not very good. They are very fast and they're sporting three hundred millimeter guns, but the dispersion can be atrocious and uh, they really, really, really rely on very specific situations where they can bring their guns to bear at closer ranges to have an impact. And uh, the, the, these are very big ships that can be, with relatively poor armor, that can be disassembled by enemy battleships very, very quickly. Bringing us to the French battleships. The French battleships don't have the best armor in the game, but they are quick and they have some devastating firepower. So these are actually more, almost more playstyle-wise like battle cruisers. Uh, they're not ships that want to sit in a line and, uh, and exchange long range gun gunfire because they don't have the armor to tank that. However, they are fast and if you can manage to, uh, to outplay enemies to get into interesting positions and to use the rapid reload uh, on, on the guns, they can do a, a very good amount of damage. Uh, the Normandy is definitely the low point of this line. This is a terrible ship at tier 6. But uh, starting with uh, tier 7, uh, they, you're actually getting into a point where they become fun. And uh, the Republic is a very good ship as well. But requires, again, good map awareness, good awareness of where you need to be, where you can go. Uh, and uh, if they work, they're glorious. If they don't, not an awful lot. So not the most consistent ships out there, but good ships regardless. Which brings us to the Italian lines. The Italian destroyer uh, tech tree branch is somewhat mirroring the French destroyers with some differences. So again, these are extremely fast ships, but they have uh, lots of uh, short duration fuel smoke. So you find fuel smokes, the smoke screens that you can take with you, where well, you don't have to stop in it, but just kind of temporary invisibility cloaks. Uh, you find that across the Italian line quite a bit. Uh, they have semi armor piercing shells, which is also somewhat of a specialty of the Italian line. Uh, the, the Italian destroyers uh, are fast and uh, have, a, have some utility with these smoke screens. Extremely short-ranged guns, 
but uh, pretty decent torpedoes. So this is more of a line of uh, where the French fast destroyers are keep your distance and spam the enemy. This is a line of zip around, dodge, <laughs> bob and weave and try to get your torpedoes on target. Uh, the semium piercing against enemy destroyers is quite effective, but again, you're suffering from an extremely short range on the guns. The Italian heavy cruisers, uh, or cruisers in general, they start to become heavy, I think, at the Zara at tier 7. Uh, the Italian cruisers also can fire um, semi-armor piercing, and uh, they are uh, they're a good cruiser line, but um, you do, ag again, need to know what you're doing with the shell types here. And uh, with the semi-armor piercing, they have a relatively long reload on the guns. The semi-armor piercing is absolutely devastating against destroyers because it tends not to overpenetrate. And uh, the armor piercing can do pretty well against uh, against battleships, but you're not going to be able to set fires. You do, however, get the fuel smokes. You get the uh, you get the uh, you get some torpedoes. So all in all, this is a decent cruiser line, and uh, but it does require you to learn how to use your shell types effectively. The Italian battleships leading up to the uh, Christopher Colombo. Uh, after they had, this was an extremely strong battleship line when it was introduced. It has since been hit with nerfs several times. I think it's probably in its final state now. Uh, the guns, while small caliber, are uh, very, very powerful. So very hard hitting guns. And again, these Italian battleships can use semi-armor piercing, which means that something like a Christopher Colombo could one shot a destroyer <laughs> with the semi-armor piercing. It can still, it just takes a lot, a lot longer to reload. So still decent chips. Uh, just be aware that they're, if you're seeing earlier reviews or earlier videos from a year or two ago, that they're nowhere near as powerful anymore as they used to be. Uh, that brings us to the European trek tree, which currently only contains a destroyer line. European destroyers are a little different. European destroyers are all in all not the fastest ships out, out there, and they have torpedoes that are different from other torpedoes. They are extremely quick, which makes them at times quite difficult to dodge from destroyers. They uh, cause f flooding like no tomorrow, but they don't do an awful lot of damage individually. So. These destroyers don't deal their damage directly, they deal their damage indirectly. This is a class of ship that relies on, uh, relies on, relies on setting floods, setting fires, and uh, managing enemy damage controls effectively. So what you want to do is, is oftentimes find an enemy target that has its damage control on cooldown and then get a perma flood and a couple perma fires going. And similar things. Uh, they tend to have pretty decent guns, so in a, and they I think they tend to have radar as well. So in a uh, in a fight you, with a with when you are within a destroyer, you probably don't necessarily want to take them lightly, especially that the fast torpedoes also make them pretty hard to dodge. So all in all this is a dangerous line of destroyers and uh, one that is also fun to play. Which brings us to the last line, uh, the Dutch cruisers. The Dutch cruisers have the gimmick or the specialty that they can launch airstrikes. Well, they don't have planes per se, but they can call in airstrikes. So uh, these are not dive bombers, these are level bombers in a way that uh, you, you pre-designate an area where they're going to strike and then the enemy has a couple of seconds to get out of that area before the, the strike comes in, which allows for quite some interesting gameplay for these cruisers to be positioning themselves behind islands and then use the airstrikes uh, effectively against enemy targets that are hidden. So they have some interest. They bring some interesting variety because they can also counter uh, ships that are that are hidden behind island positions and are otherwise inaccessible without exposing yourself. Just simply by using the airstrikes to send them around to send them over the islands and strike them there. That said, uh, against destroyers, the uh, the higher tiers, the Johan de Witt and the Holden Liu are somewhat struggling due to slow reload and uh, relatively large caliber of guns. Uh, they are not a terrible line. They're not the best cruiser line out there, but uh, the, the gimmick is definitely very, very interesting. And uh, if, you're, if you're keen to give this a try, then uh, that's, that's what they do. So I hope that has given you a bit of an overview of the line. A general rule still apply. I would suggest uh, playing 
up to sort of mid tier. Tier seven is where everything starts getting a little bit more expensive. So uh, if you're playing up to tier five or six and uh, you're comfortable there and you figured out which kind of role or which kind of class of ship that you, you like playing the most, then uh, that's a good that's a good launch point. You don't necessarily have to pick one line at the beginning of the game, of your career in the game, and play it all the way up to tier uh, tier ten. Uh, it's around tier six seven where things can start getting a little tricky, and you start running into the more experienced players more often. So uh, once you're once you're from once you're comfortable in these tiers, or once you're comfortable with with a choice, that's probably when you can choose one line that you want to grind all the way to the top. And hopefully, I could give you a little bit of a pointer in that regard today. Anyway, that's it for me today. Thanks everybody, and I will see you next time. Bye bye.